I have always, even as a preteen, had an underlying tide of curiousness that rises and falls in regards to spirituality and wondering why we are really here as a species. I was raised as a Pentecostal Christian and I always remember feeling like this is bullshit during children's church and consequently even as a teenager and young adult during sermons. Why do I get to go to heaven? Because I was born in rural Georgia and it was pressed upon me early that Jesus is the only way? What about people born into Hindu or Islam? What about them? It just didn't sit right with me spiritually. There had to be more. My father passed away to suicide in 2009, and amidst my shattered world, months later, the tides came rolling back in. Why am I here? Is life really only about being a consumer, working a 9 to 5 and putting the cycle on repeat, and to teach my future children to do the same? That felt, and still feels, just wrong. Then came my researching in different religions, or more specifically, the origins of most religions. Visions, insights, miracles. How? Why? Why don't everyday people have visions anymore? Why don't people have experiences in the divine anymore? If civilizations were built on religion and the divine experiences, what is the point when there are no longer divine experiences? You can only read so much about God, but what is reading without having an experience? I realize how long-winded this post will be if I don't at least try and summarize. So yeah, after researching the aforementioned topics and learning that many of these visions and experiences of the divine were induced by psychoactive plants, it piqued my interest in psychedelics. The problem was, however, that I lived in a rural Georgia in a very religious Christian household. I didn't know who to ask as I had no contacts for DMT, LSD, or shrooms. Weed only made me want to go down the rabbit hole even more and fueled my desire to experience something divine or otherworldly. Well shit, I think I found something and it's legal. And it's been used for a very long time in South America among the spiritual natives, Salvia Divinorum. I ordered some Salvia and I knew enough about the breakthrough dilemma and I already made it up in my mind I wanted that on the first try. I didn't want to start small. I didn't want to be in between. I wanted to go as far as I could. I ordered 3 grams of 20 times standardized extract and I bought a jet lighter and a water bong. Trip 1, August 2010. I dimmed the lights in my house and had my cousin trip sit, planning to alternate after I reintegrated with reality. I played the song Delirium, The Silence, Tiesto's In Search of Sunrise remix as loud as the TV could play it. I torched the fully packed bowl, keeping the jet flame on the bowl the entire time. I thought the smoke would be harsh judging by how the extract was burning and the pale yellowish white smoke was overtaking the bong chamber. But to my surprise, I inhaled almost the entire bowl. I told myself to count to 30. I made it to 12. The first thing I noticed was a straight line pull of gravity, but it wasn't happening to my body. It was happening in my mind. My eyes rolled backwards, tracing the line of gravity as it was pulling me. It felt as though my eyes rolled so far back that I was entirely looking inward. In this place, I had no more body. I wasn't being pulled by gravity. I was gravity. I suddenly felt the presence of a being. It was an ancient feminine presence. She was holding me from behind and I had the sense of being immature in her eyes, like I wasn't quite ready for this, but she will take and show me through this infinite anyways. I remember being suspended in vastness, being held by her, the entity, and she was connected to a rail of darkish light, or either she was the actual light rail, I'm not quite sure. I didn't feel like the rail was an inanimate object, she had a very powerful presence and was only being depicted as a rail of light perhaps. It's like I was shown the fallacy of believing a presence of any kind had to be tied to an animated body in order for it to be a real living entity. She took me on what I can only describe as a soul ride or a spirit ride through a dark ether with occasional flashes or pixelations of very saturated color, almost cyberpunkish of sorts. We then came to a giant hand sprawled into a graceful clench-like stature, like someone gracefully holding a rose, but there was no rose. Instead, there was what I describe as a double helix of this dark light, and we zoomed in upon the top of it, and I saw our planet Earth. The message I got is how infinitely small we are in the vastness of everything, 
Sober-minded people have a hard time grasping the thought of timelessness, infinite, or a state of forever, but I felt like I was able to grasp it all at once. Then I suddenly started reintegrating with my body, with patchwork memories and flashes that are scrambled, and it would be like describing random images and flashcards being shown to me at a very fast rate. I can only describe so much in our limited language. As I started coming back to my body, I remember not knowing language. I knew what I wanted to say, but I didn't know how. Fast forward 20 minutes and my cousin, the trip sitter, said I kept mumbling how this life is only a blip and it doesn't come close to whatever is out there. Trip 2, three days after my first experience, I decided to give it another go. I could not get what I had experienced out of my mind. I wanted to experience something even if it were a fraction of what went down three days ago. I was outside on our patio porch swing. The pattern of the swing cushions were solid white and green stripes. I put on my headphones and played the same song as in trip one and began ingesting salvia in the same exact manner. I hunched over, my eyes nearly closed. I'm not sure if these were closed eye visuals or not, but I'd like to think so. I felt that string of gravity pulling me from somewhere beyond. Again, the pull peaked as my eyes felt like they were following the trail behind the string, and it felt as if my eyes were looking inward again. Suddenly, like a tapestry covering all of my eyesight, all that overlaid my vision was the repeating vertical green and white stripes of the patio swing, though seemingly cartoonish and maybe what I perceived as slightly mechanical. Then, my periphery vanished as I zoomed in upon where the green and white stripes met. Suddenly, the stripes began to unzip where they met each other, and again, from behind, I was grabbed and pulled into the other side of the veil by her. This again was a soul-slash-spirit ride. Same rail of dark and light, but more color throughout the vastness between being shown as what I can only describe as other dimensions. Some of the memory is like quick flashes or snapshots of what seemed like a carnival slideshow and worlds of mechanical intricacy. Some memories are like a few seconds of a movie. At one point, guided by whatever was between me and the light rail, or either the light rail itself, I'm not entirely sure. I have a very faint image of her embodiment, though I rarely saw it. Something close to a jester, fairy, and elf combination. Multicolored in pattern with utmost saturation of color hues. We swung into a solid gray covered box. Upon slamming into this box, she stayed on the outside of it, back in the ether vastness, and I had first plunged into this box while she held me from behind. There, I was inside of a grocery store in another world. It reminded me afterwards of some alien grocery store from Rick and Morty. I was what I perceived to be inside the refrigerated section, and cartons and boxes went flying below, where I saw a cartoonish green being. I hardly want to say alien, I don't want to say elf. I will just leave it at otherworldly. The character looked up towards where the boxes fell, and I got the impression she had witnessed something similar before, or as if this is a regular occurrence of sorts, seemingly unfazed. I suddenly was thrusted back into this reality, completely baffled by the journey. Time was weird, I feel like I had saw so much in such a short span of time, but my song had only been playing for nearly four minutes. My clothes felt abrasive as if my skin was ever so slightly sunburned. I felt a spot on my back that almost felt numb. I again felt like I was seemingly just between two worlds, and now I'm back in some biomechanical machine that houses whatever it is that I am in that other place. I was purely consciousness, perhaps? This is always the uncomfortable part with Salvi, it seems. Reintegrating. Trip 3, November 2011. It had just been over a week since my father's two-year anniversary of departure from this life. I was really in emotional turmoil. I was experimenting with a host of prescription drugs and abusing them with alcohol. I was in a phase of blowing through the only thing my father left me with, a life insurance policy. I was throwing free-for-all parties and supplying alcohol and weed to whoever showed up. Fake friends and people who took advantage of me were a coin toss away. I was in a state of desperation, and the alcohol and pills weren't enough on this particular night. I'd stumbled upon a half-empty bag of salvia extract in a box where I recovered my old bong. I thought, fuck it, let's go someplace else other than here. 
I went outside, alone, and I went about it as the times before, minus the jet lighter. On this bricked ledge, I approached Salvia with a mindset of, let's get really fucked up. I knew instantly this was not like the times before, and I had absolutely no business being wherever I was. From behind, as always, she was there, but I also felt the presence of lesser beings around as well. She was very angry and disappointed. I was told, not audibly, but telepathically, I never heard words audibly, I just felt thoughts and their meaning, that I would not be able to leave this place, which was, by all accounts, an empty void of blackness. All I felt was the sheer anger and disappointment from them, accompanied with a heavy gravity that was not like before where it had direction and purpose. It was just heavy and thick, and it was all-encompassing. I started to panic, and I just wanted to go back to wherever it is that I'm supposed to be, because it sure as fuck was not here. I pleaded, and I got the ultimate point that this world is not to be entered for purposes of mere recreation and entertainment, but to be respected and revered. I felt my outside desperation come into this world, only it was a hundredfold. I knew I would never be able to leave. Am I dead? Am I prisoner? What came before this? I don't care where it is. I just don't want to be here anymore. Please help me. I start to feel the gravity easing, and I bid farewell with the telepathic voice saying, Do not come back. The feeling of unwelcomeness was very apparent. Once I came back to about 15 minutes after, in a drunken stupor, I felt grateful to be alive, and I had an existential crisis where I started to re-examine my life. About a month later, I was completely clean, cold turkey. I started going to school with little direction as to what it was that I wanted to do. I went for a nursing degree, and long story short, no seriously, it didn't pan out after three years, so I decided to join the military. I did six years and had become a different person than I had ever been before, but once I got out, the tides came rolling back in. What is life? What is the meaning here? It feels like a dead-end world that we are all sleepwalking through. What is our true meaning as humans? After the military, I was on medication for anxiety and depression, and I started seeing all the articles as of late regarding the benefits of microdosing psychedelics. It's so much more accessible now. Let's give it a try. I relocated close to where there are legal dispensaries and got my hands on psilocybin mushrooms. I started microdosing three days on and three days off at 300 milligrams. After two weeks, I started to appreciate life more. I got off all of my medications and a strong drive for truth resurfaced in a way like never before. Some people call this, I suppose, a spiritual awakening. Two weeks ago, out of seemingly nowhere, I started thinking of Salvia and by some miracle, looked past the last trip I had roughly 12 years ago. I felt a calling if I had to label it as something. Well, yesterday the package arrived from the same website as before all those years ago. My wife was interested as well, so I had ordered 2 grams of, again, 20 times extract. I had a bong, jet lighter, and my salve on hand. Trip 4, December 2023. I was nervous, understandably. Though I had this overcoating feeling of, it's okay, I'll be fine, it will be good. The echoes of my last trip came to mind, do not come back. But I felt that message was intended for that immature, hurting, and callous person that was sitting on that bricked wall 12 years ago, not the man I am today. The call slash pull to partake overrode the fear of the unknown. I dimmed the lights, put in my AirPods playing Delirium, The Silence, Tiesto's In Search of Sunrise Remix, as I did in 2010, and I held the jet lighter until nothing was left in the bowl. Again, I counted to 30, and I only made it to 14 seconds. My wife sat on the edge of the bed as I closed my eyes. I started to feel the string of gravity pull me harder than ever before, my eyes turning inward. I instantly felt so welcomed, like seeing a distant, nearly estranged family member's house on the holidays. The smells, the layout, the entire climate being foreign yet memorable. I felt almost celebrated. I uneasily felt so at peace. I am in no danger, despite the intensity. 
I saw myself from above with my wife on the edge of the bed, the room as it was. I drifted outwards, being pulled by her. My mental image of the room I was in had frozen, and then as I zoomed outward into the ether, I saw the image, me, my wife, and the room start to be hushed away on a page of a book or a plated wheel. This book or wheel went on almost infinitely, and that moment in time was frozen and portrayed on the page within this book. As I zoomed out, I knew she and the smaller entities were behind me. This time, I noticed what I was. I was pure consciousness, and I was seemingly infinite. I was a dark pillar of light, same as the goddess behind me, same as the much smaller light rail from my first two trips. Her communication with me was, again, telepathic and completely understood. She imparted to me what I was looking at. I was looking at the page that was almost closing. I somehow managed to get a footing into the page so that it would not completely close. I did not want it to close because I knew it contained something I cared about within. I could hardly remember her face at this point, but I could not let her go. I could not let the page close. I heard other voices, the lessers were encouraging and almost even celebrating for me to turn around and face something behind me, something beyond comprehension. I had such an immense urge to turn and look, but it seemed my footing to keep the page bookmarked overrode that urge. Her voice took over that of the lessers, she imparted me to an extremely clear message, you want to know the true meaning of life, but you are holding on to memories. I then realized what this book was. Every page, every single page, was a life lived and a life to be lived. A life I have lived, and when I say I, I mean we, the readers of this and myself. I had the know, all that we are, all the same. We are a shared consciousness, and we are all drops, pages, in the same ocean, infinite book. I chose this life. I chose to experience this memory because of the one person I could not let go of. At this point, I can almost remember her face, but I certainly cannot remember her name. I wanted to remember her name. I focused, and my urge to look behind me at whatever spectacle was there was overridden with opening the page. As this pillar of consciousness, it was like I had an endless force or ability to experience any one of these pages I wanted to, but I chose this one. I wasn't a small part of me anymore. I saw all of me, and I was powerful beyond words. Are the other pages being experienced as I have experienced mine? Is it happening right now? Is another part of me living in another reality as this out of space and time experience is occurring? I feel like that is the case. She repeated again, memory. She repeated again, memory. But it wasn't spoken in three syllables. It was drawn out to the music I heard distantly in my mind. Wait, I knew this song. It felt like hours the word memory was slowly drawn out and spoken to me, the music getting louder. I slowly descended back into the book and into the page. By the time the word was finished being spoken to me, the frozen picture of my room was in full view. I was completely aware that I was in between worlds, dimensions, and frequencies. I do not have words to describe any of this. As I came to, I tried speaking, and I could not. The pool was lessening, and I knew I needed to tell my wife what I experienced. You're a memory, but I choose you. I try to say this to her incoherently. It was the most profound moment of my life. I could go on, but this is already way too long. Holy shit.